coming out and seeing what goes on in the county taking part in uh, our meeting. A um, couple notes is that we will hear each case and there will be a public hearing where anyone is allowed to speak. Um, any opposing side, you can get together and kind of caucus and you can have up to 10 minutes to talk or if you've signed up you have three minutes. Each individual person has three minutes to talk. The, and then the, um, the applicant has, or and those in favor of would have 10 minutes to talk to. Or if each individual that signs up has three minutes to talk. Um, the staff will report and then those that have signed up will be allowed to speak. And then, like I said, that's when each side will have 10 minutes if, if y'all want to congregate and um, speak, have one person speak or a couple people speak, you'll have up to 10 minutes. So just kind of FYI, because we've got a little bit larger than average crowd uh, than we normally do at planning meetings. So did I leave out anything, Richard? Or? So essentially, as, as a public hearing, anybody can speak. Please sign up in general for being here. And, um, you know, please make sure, especially if you're going to speak, you know, absolutely that, that you have signed up. Um, and everybody has the right to be heard. So the Planning Commission can choose, if they want to, to extend time. Um, but the minimum is 10 minutes per side. That's pro in in favor of and against okay so without any further ado if you would please stand for our invocation of pledge of allegiance our gracious heavenly father I want to thank you lord for the many blessings of life lord too, new, too numerous to mention lord thank you for allowing us to gather here and please be with this commission board to make the best recommended decisions for the citizens of Pickens County. Be with our soldiers fighting for our freedoms on foreign soil. Be with our nation's leaders, Lord. And all these many favors and things we ask in our son's name. Amen. Amen. My pleasure is to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Item 2 is reading and approval of last month's meeting <coughs> minutes. Make a move with Dr. Miller. Second. We have a move and second to adopt uh, last month's minutes. Any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. The third item is old business. We have none. The fourth item is new business. We have uh, a rezone or a special use events request. And I'd like to announce we're going to open up a public hearing for this, this issue. I'd like to ask Richard what the county's recommendation is, please. Thank you, Mr. Cagle. I'll note for both cases that both cases have been legally advertised. We do have a copy on hand uh, of public information policies and procedures for how the Planning Commission operates. So, um, you know, now or after the meeting, I'll be glad to get anybody that, that wants it. Uh, and I will ask that for both cases, the staff report and the entire case file be made a part of the record. For this first case, I'm going to hand y'all out something that's been received by our office just this week. For this special event case, the applicant and the adjacent property owner, Angels on Horseback, have come to a tentative written agreement for a second drive to be opened when events are held. That is not a legal agreement at this point. The legal details are being hashed out, but they do have a written agreement while the process is ongoing. 
Brent Hancock and Deborah Mills submitted an application for a conditional use application on 15 acres at 673 <coughs> Long Swamp Church Road. The intent would be to host small special events such as bridal or baby showers, dinner parties, catered dinner or lunch parties themed around holidays, fundraising events, and outdoor weddings. This property was formerly the site of Bull Scratch Farm, which included some agribusiness and agritourism. The applicants have stated that all events will end by 10 p.m. or earlier. The applicants are the owner occupiers of the main house as they closed on the property and moved in this year. This property accesses Long Swamp Church Road from the gravel section. The property has a long driveway and as was mentioned there has historically been a second driveway connecting the property to Penley Circle. The applicants have now reached an agreement with Angels on Horseback and they are working out the legal details. In addition to the main house built in about 1989, the structures on the property include a barns, shed, and utility building. In reviewing the criteria to consider for conditional uses, a couple of things that stood out, uh, hours and manner of operation, Nearby uses include Angels on Horseback, Long Swamp Baptist Church, Contractor's Office, and Single Family Houses, limiting the hours so that all operations end at or before 10 o'clock may be appropriate. This proposed use is consistent with the goals and objectives of the comprehensive plan. Staff recognizes that one of the goals of the comprehensive plan is for community leaders to promote agritourism, ecotourism, heritage tourism, and other innovative business opportunities. For this application, staff recommends that a condition be placed on the property that all operations must end at or before 10 o'clock. Is uh, anyone here from Mr. Hancock here? Uh, yes, sir. you'd like to add? Um, yeah, I just... Uh, Introduce my you would please yeah, I'll say your name and address. Yeah, and my name is Brent Hancock, um, owner operator of uh, Bent Tree Lodge and Vineyard uh, Bed and Breakfast, and it's 673 Long Swamp Church Road. Um, we, um, Debbie and I, moved out. We kind of had a vision of uh, having a bed and breakfast, and so we we got up and found this property, which is just perfect and it's beautiful, and we just fell in love with it. And so we're this close now to getting uh, approval from the health department for opening up next month as a B&B. We got the uh, fire marshal coming out tomorrow uh, for our fire alarm. So we're really excited about how everything's come together. But we, part of our vision is having a bed and breakfast. We live on site. My parents are downsizing and relocating from Kansas City. They'll be here in about a week, so they'll be living on site with us too. Um, so it's kind of a, a fa it was going to be a family kind of affair, if you will. Um, but we want to um, we enjoy hosting, and we want to be able to give back to the community. And part of part of what we want to do is be able to have venue for weddings. So if someone wants to stay on our property in our bed and breakfast, that we have the opportunity to provide weddings for them. Um, we really envision no more than 75 to maybe 100 people ever at any one time. Um, we're still both working full time, so the bed and breakfast is only going to be open on weekends to start. Um, so we're just kind of slowly kind of getting into this, but the main thing we really want to be able to do is just have an, have an opportunity for people to come and use our property, come to Pickens County, hopefully spend money in the county. Um, but then we also want to be able to give back to the community. And we've talked with Angels on Horseback as uh, them to use our property um, for any meetings they might have or fundraisers. And so we want, that's kind of where we're at. We want to really be a fabric of the community and be a part of it. And that's part of what we got up here. I grew up in small town, Missouri. And 
moved around a lot, lived in big cities, and coming up here is just like a slice of heaven. And it just people are so nice and friendly. Our neighbor Wayne Anderson has just been a super great guy, <coughs> and we just we love it up here. So we want to be able to share our property with those around. Um, we don't anticipate having lots of events uh, because of our size, and we will limit ourselves to what we have. And we will definitely be done no later than 10 o'clock because I don't want to stay up all hours and even have to clean up, but I know my parents don't either. So um, we're really excited about this, and we appreciate your guys' consideration. Thank you. Any other questions? Mr. What, what, what improvements do you envision making to the property? Well, our kind of our long long term plan, if you will, is we got a um, we had a um, oh, guy, landscape, landscape landscape guy come out design architect. outdoor living space. Yeah, you can, for us. you <laughs> talk to him. So you can. Uh, we we had a landscape architect come right after we closed on the property and designed outdoor living space for us, which would include an outdoor fireplace, uh, brick paver, patio area. Um, and some trellis work and just a beautiful outdoor just really highlighting the mountain view that we have at this property um, as a small venue to have very small intimate weddings um, we, we don't have a huge amount of space so it would not be a large wedding venue but something very intimate um, and small is something that we would be able to accommodate and, and provide that for the community um, so part of the improvements would be this outdoor patio area, trellis work, an outdoor fireplace to make it an outdoor entertaining. We love the outdoors. Um, and then the back field pasture that used to be part of the farm would be an area that we would use for parking. Hmm. So those are improvements that we would be making. And if you, um, if you think about, if you've been to um, Chateau Mitri, my tree, and if you've been out to kind of the patio area off to the side, that's really kind of the size of area we're talking about um, having. Um, so that's if, if you've been there and kind of that's kind of the size of what we envision our that's the size of our back there. Yeah. So um, so that, that's the outside improvement. What, what about structure? Do you, do you... The interior structure is. Um, didn't really need much improvement. It was laid out perfectly. But you're going to live in there. Too. Yes, we are. Yes. And there's, there's an owner's suite that we will live in. And eventually, one of my parents will be plotting off an acre and a half for their home. And then we'll move into the owner's quarters uh, once they're out. And then we'll rent out four rooms eventually. Um, but we'll have the, we have the, ability to, uh, have the ability to close off the kitchen and have a large, it's a large open area in the main. Um, the big fireplace and uh, so so what square footage is is allocated towards the special event things that you're going to have if if you need to have inside inside I, uh, that's probably I would estimate that's probably yeah it's probably probably a thousand square feet the main living room there's not a lot of room mm -hmm. right. That's what I mean. We're talking small events. Hundred people, a thousand square feet, gonna be pretty big when it's coming up the other washer. <laughs> <laughs> Better be good friends. <laughs> they gotta be great friends. Very good. This is well. Excuse me. This is well water. Have you had the well tested? Do you think it's gonna be adequate for this many guests? Um. Actually, haven't had the well tested. Um, haven't had any issues with it, mm -hmm. and there's been plenty of pressure when we've had full rooms and people using the water. How far away from the church are you? All? Um, as the crow flies straight line, about a thousand feet from our front door to the edge of the church. So, uh, with uh, the agreement to give you access off of Pinley Road, is that right? Yes. W which which road is going to be the primary entrance? Would it be off of Pinley or would it be off the other road? Primary entrance uh, would be off of 
the gravel section of Long Swamp. And then it would be a one way coming in and then out to uh, Penley Circle. One way on your drive? Correct. How, how would you control that with your guests? Uh, that's a good question. We'll have signage that says uh, um, entrance only or, you know, do not enter sign for people when you come out. And uh, as an event would end, then we would have to make sure that we would have some direct people. Yeah, well, on the entrance, you could get there off of Highway 50. Well, it's not really Highway off of a... Well, no, I'm off of a... Long Swamp. Long Swamp. It's not the highway. Oh. Cobra. Cobra. Oh. Yes, that's the main entrance. Yeah, that's the, the main. Direct people off of Long Swamp. Yeah, but you can turn on Big Tree Drive off Cobra. If you miss that, you can go down Long Swamp. You can get there either way. Correct. Correct. So how you going to make sure that happens? Which happens? The, 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 access. the guests have to choose the right access on the Cobra. We would definitely like to talk about putting signage so that people know to use the entrance, the, the paved part of Long Swamp Church Road. Um, that's my preference, that, that people would go down Cove Road to the stop sign at Long Swamp Church and make the left and take the paved access. It's a, it's a prettier drive coming in that way, sure. and they only have a very small area of gravel. So that would be the one-way drive into the property. And then, as an event would end, they would leave out the other driveway, Penley Circle, and we would make sure there would be a sign there to point them to the right, so that sure. they're going back to the paved part of Long Swamp Church Road. Yeah. Does that um, answer your question? It, it does, <coughs> but, you know, have you said anything to the property owners there on the road? We have not, not, we have not yet, because that's part of making sure all of this is, if this is approved, then we know to start to approach people. I, don't, I guess I'm, I'm unaware of the order of sequence of events, if yeah. we should be placing those signs before we're approved. No, but I would certainly bruise that with, okay. the, with the property owners in that area because okay. that's one of my biggest concerns is, is traffic in that area, and especially emergency services. Yes. Having witnessed ambulance movement in that area, it is not very easy, especially okay. at night. There's not any street lights. There's very little light in that area. It can be extremely dark. And one of the things we need to do as public servants is look out for public safety. Absolutely. A rainy night with 100 people with limited facilities and an accident happens on that roadway with limited traffic coming in and out would be very difficult and a burden on you guys that I think you should seriously consider. Richard, you, you asked on uh, number one here, you asked uh, or requested information from the public safety staff if they'd given you any feedback yet. I did ask for input from, uh, from the Sheriff's Department, from FIRE, from EMA, from um, other staff members, and I did not get any comments, concerns, objections, anything like that. And, and it was understood that they should give you that information before tonight? Yes, sir. That was going to be my next question as well. <laughs> Just trying to be helpful. <laughs> you raised a good question tonight. Well, there's no good way for emergency vehicle to either be a tree drive, you got dirt road, or Long Swamp Church Road is paved, but it's not much better, really, a one lane road, and it's fairly curvy. So, I mean, that is a concern, an obvious concern. So, that, but no, no one from the sheriff or EMA got back with you on that at all? No, and, um, you know, there is no precedent setting case. We have had this come up before on other properties with other conditional use, you know, special event facilities. I have not gotten comments or feedback in those cases. In this case, I, I did not either. Whose responsibility is it to see if that's done before we have the meeting? Or is that something that they should have checked on? Or? But I think, um, you know, if there was something significant, because not only through email, but, you know, face-to-face, 
I also reached out to these guys and said, you know, please let me know if there's something of significant concern why it would be unusual in terms of topography or um, floodplain or surface material, paved versus gravel, or you know, only one way from several roads getting to a property. Um, again, you know, I, I don't want to get too much into the weeds about one particular case versus another. Um, you know, there were potentially more concerns uh, on the, the Ben Jones property uh, on North, North Pickens at the Gilmer line where you had coming off 515, you came onto a gravel road with, um, you know, probably 10% grade or something like that. Um, you know, especially just before you turn from that narrow gravel public road onto his long, narrow uh, private drive where there was a lot of floodplain on his property and um, it, it was, you know, more challenging for sure than this property. Does that take away from, from this property in particular, you know, possible concerns? No, it doesn't take away from it. Um, there weren't comments or concerns then from public safety folks, and for this case, I, I didn't get any either. Any other questions? If you put 50 or 60 cars on that road, have you got parking for them? Yes, we did. Yeah, we've got about good parking where they can get out if it's a raining or you're going to have to have record service out there. <laughs> well, rain might be a little different. But that rain could be a challenge because uh, it's it's a uh, pasture. Just where they'd be parking. That's just about a one lane road. And, you know, if you have 100 people, you're going to have 50 to 60 cars at least. The road um, that y'all are trying to gain access to or work out a deal with angels and horseback, is it in pretty decent shape? Yeah, it's, con it's, with con it's, it's concrete. It's oh, it is in good shape, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Sir, so this would be handicap accessible. You don't have restrooms built or just the ones in the building? The ones in the building. And they're adequate for 100 people. Yeah. Maximum 100 people. I mean, I, we, I, we would not plan to host events that would be. I'm thinking smaller oh, I'm events, bridal showers. Yeah. Maximum 100 people. Yes, so I'm assuming that would be yes. a, a maximum. Yes, and, and, and you know, thinking it, if we did have a wedding that was going to be 100 people, I would look at the possibility of adding porta potties if we needed to do something like that. Um, if we didn't. I don't know that one bathroom downstairs is going to be adequate for 100 people. Um, but that would be placed on people that would be renting the space to bring in maybe a facility as part of the event plan. You know, we, we, we've had a couple of these come through, and part of part of why Richard brings that up about the one in North Dickens was, was my concern over that one as well. Mm -hmm. um, I asked the public safety questions there. And I, I don't know what what we can do to improve the process or what needs to happen to, to get something in, in feedback. You, know, you mentioned you're having a fire marshal inspection mm -hmm. tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I wish you would have said yesterday or mm -hmm. last week. You know? And well, I well, get a better feel from them. We've already been working. working. We had um, um, uh, Curtis out and he saw the place and told us what we needed to do. He approved the plans and that they've been installed, and I've been trying to get him in for the past two weeks. Just uh, the final really <coughs> yeah, it's just the final inspection. Final inspection, because we've already done the checklist, everything that you suggested. Sure, but is that, did I hear you correctly, that's what bed and breakfast part? Mm -hmm. Correct, yes. Which, which is different than hosting an event. So part, part, yeah. of, part of my thinking process and reading the application and, and listening to you speak is very much you know, a long-term plan a property, any property owner would have that wants to do something there. But I just don't know if, um, if this is kind of a cart before the horse kind of thing. Get that established, see what traffic is like for people coming out. Because as a transplant as well, I, I moved to Vegas and I did not grow up here. Obviously, I can't remember Cove Road, and I live off of it. But they, you know, just 
getting getting to know the, the the county and the area and the access in different directions. You know, hit Google Maps in a place you've been 15 times, it'll take you a whole different direction in Dickens County. Mm -hmm. You know, surprising to me. And that's one thing I did just for for your information. I hit it from Google Maps from here, and it's taking me right up Bent Tree Drive and you know down the gravel road. Um, so if you're looking for someone to have that scenic route coming in the other direction, mm -hmm. you, it's going to be hard for you to control 75 guests mm -hmm. and which way they go and, and how they go in and how they go out, which, which way they turn and those type of things. Mm -hmm. So it's just uh, the, the, the traffic increase and the potential for people from out of county, what's their experience going to be if they come to Pickens County if something unexpected happens. You've got a great piece of property, great view. It's beautiful there. I know it is. I've been out that way years ago. But uh, you know, it's the people that don't know the area, that don't know what it's like, that come into town for one event and something unexpected happens. We have to consider that as well. And I, I, I just don't know that we're at that point to really be prepared for that. You don't have any of your permits yet. Fire marshal haven't checked or nothing else. Yeah, Mr. Hensley, I. I appreciate your time. If it's okay, I'll, I'll be glad to sort of clarify about that. So, with any of these cases, whether it's rezoning or conditional use, um, we've got to, as staff, focus on on zoning related issues first. Those have to come first, and then whatever happens or doesn't happen, then all the code compliance, life safety code compliance, licensing permitting, things like that, those all come next. And just because something, you know, is approved or not approved doesn't necessarily mean then, you know, they can go straight to go. Um, for example, Barn at Dunn Manor um, from a couple of years ago went through Planning Commission and the elected officials and was approved with condition that all activities end at 10 o'clock or before. That didn't stop the process. There was still a significant amount of time working on code compliance issues, life safety compliance issues. They are fully compliant and they are fully permitted and licensed. But there was a lot of work involved. It was more than just getting that recommendation from the Planning Commission and approval from Board of Commissioners. And so, you know, I don't want y'all to think, well, you know, because something may or may not be fully inspected yet, that, you know, what we're looking at tonight, of course, is zoning. And um, in particular, the standards, the criteria to consider for conditional uses. Now, some of these things are somewhat related, like traffic and hours of operation, and they will be a part of licensing and permitting. Um, but, you know, obviously, you know, you, you may not want to put, for example, a condition that, well, everything be code compliant because it, it would be an unnecessary condition because everything will have to be code compliant before <coughs> they can ever operate. Any other questions or comments? Not, not for this one. This is for uh, item number um, I'm assuming this is for Sam Wheeler, your item number two, the next one. The one you want to speak about. Yeah. Okay. You, you just didn't mark which one. I did. So do we have nobody speaking on on this one? Um, let me let me just make sure if anybody Everybody needs to sign in, and if you want to speak, please, you know, sign. Because again, I, you know, I want to make sure everybody has the opportunity to be heard. I didn't know where um, we were supposed okay. to. Okay. Sure. Yeah, I'm glad. Up here, that. but I didn't know. Okay. So this is the one. Right this here. is for filled up. Okay. Both of these are filled up. Okay. I signed up. Okay. I was just saying, like Sam, for anybody that wants to speak, I'm right. asking actually. Yeah. I just want to say we had nobody signed up yet. Yeah. 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 I just wanted to know you're 
Two people that would like to speak. Um, Miss Lisa Pasilla, you're the first one. Can you please state your address, please? Hi, my name is Lisa Pasilla, and I live in 76 Edgewood Lane in Bend Tree. I, am, um, I have been here two years, and I love this place. I mean, there are not nicer people than there are in Pippin's County, <laughs> except in Kathmandu in Nepal. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I am from Finland and I lived all over the world. I'm a, a meditation instructor and I also teach a yoga type, all the people's, ex all the people's exercise uh, called Tai Chi. So I, I give classes in Bentry weekly. And, uh, and uh, from some very happy people. And I have been a um, meditation instructor and I have held retreats all over the world, in Australia, in the United States, in Florida, in, in, uh, in uh, St. Paul, Minnesota, Spain, and uh, Finland, of course, India, Nepal, um, a lot of places. When I saw this, you left out that there could be meditation retreats. And uh, I have been actually looking forward to having some place here, and I've been asking people around, where can I give my meditation retreats? There's nothing in Bentry because it requires that people from outside come <coughs> and spend the nights there, or that Audrey comes and, and uh, you know attends the retreat and then goes back to her house. We usually don't have more than 15 people. I can't imagine 100 people. I mean, you're very positive, but uh, I don't think we'll have a lot of 100 people gatherings over there. Not like the churches here have like a gazillion people. <laughs> Very orderly, they, they move in and out. Um, I would love to see this. I'm for, for this because I don't want to uh, insult anybody, but Pickens County is seems to be a little bit more backward, like Elijah, you know, it's Gilmer, it's Canton. It's, I would like to see Jasper flourish. And... Um, I would like to see this, I'm, I'm for this, this venue to, to, to start, because I'm one of them that I would like to, when my family comes, I only have two be spare bedrooms, when they come from Finland, I have family in Finland, California, they come over here, where am I going to put them, in the Woodbridge Inn, that's expensive, 
sometimes it's a little bit dirty and they don't have a place together. So with a place like this right next door to where I live, I would love that. And uh, of course, at 10 o'clock at night comes without a question in every community. I mean, you, you're not going to, if you want to dance till 2 o'clock in the morning, it's okay in Ben Tree if you got good insulation. But um, I would like to, have I gone over three minutes? I'm so sorry. Yeah, about one minute. Okay, <laughs> I think this is a great idea, and I think it would bring a lot of good things, and I'm a one of the happy neighbors that I welcome you, and uh, I'm for it. That's all. I, I would love to use it, and, and uh, I think it would bring some enlightenment to this, to this uh, county. Thank you for hearing me. Uh, Ms. Margie Carroll? Yes. Can you please state your address? Name yes. Name? My address is 4992 Cove Road. I'm less than a mile away from the proposed venue. I have concerns about this. <clears throat> I can't say that I'm totally against it, but I'm not. I'm certainly not totally for it because what I'm wondering is, if you decide to uh, leave the property, then does this zoning go, it's grandfathered in. So then the next people that own this property, their ideas of events might be totally different from what it, this benign, sweet, soft and warm and fuzzy feeling that we're all getting right now, but does that, does that project into the future? That's what I want to know. And I don't know how, what the words events actually mean. I mean, it could mean so many things. I mean, if I wanted to go to events, I would have moved to Pace's Fair. You know, I would have moved to Buckhead. But an event of a little wedding with your niece and nephew, I mean, that's all fabulous. Who could, who could say that wasn't good? So I'm wondering about how this goes to the future after you leave the property, the next people that own the property. That's one thing. The other thing is I'm really, I'm really concerned about the egress and ingress into the property. It has not, <clears throat> it's not fully formed yet, apparently, with angels on horseback. I hear two different things from y'all. One is, oh, we'll have the ingress off of the gravel and we'll have it. Well, if 50 cars go in that way, 50 cars have got to go out the other way. And, and so I don't think it's firmed up satisfactorily yet for me to be on the road completely. And I don't know how to get the events, you know, actually firmed up where you can say, oh, yes, only weddings, only, because you want to have some who would not want meditation to go on there? It's a, you know, that just sounds like a wonderful thing. But a rap concert, no, I'm not for that. But well, say you are not for that. You're not for that either. But what if the you're next people, that. what if the next people are? It, or a hot air balloon event. I mean, you know how, it's, <laughs> I'm a children's book author. <laughs> so, um, so you've got to just give me that, like, wildness. But, um. I'm concerned about it, and I just think it needs to be really, it, if the traffic part was uh, addressed in a better way, then I could have omit that from my argument and just go on to what is an event. But that's where I stand on the problem. Thank you, Mr. Richard, you want to address that, your question about sure. the future? Yes, yeah, sir. So, um, Rezoning or conditional use cases can be approved or denied, or they can be approved with conditions. And uh, the more conditions, the harder it is to um, remember for years and years and years as staff change and as um, legal implications come in and as um, enforcement question questions come up. So there is absolutely nothing wrong with conditions as long as they are legally enforceable and they're easily understood by person one, two, and three. So a condition that all activities in at or before 10 o'clock at night, um, in a worst case scenario, um, an operator of a business, a sheriff's deputy, um, a, a county staff person, a variety of people, a neighbor, a variety of people can fairly easily understand what that means. Um, another possible condition uh, could be 
that the granting of this request um, is only for the applicant. And then if the, if the owner operator changed, then the new uh, potential owner operator would not be able to get a business license and an alcohol license until they came back before the Planning Commission and Board of Commissioners and got approval. Um, that has happened. Uh, and then also, the, the more typical for rezoning or conditional use is if it gets approved, it gets approved and it runs with the land and there is no time expiration um, or it gets denied. Any other questions or comments from the board? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I have a comment. Um, it seems to me we need to, uh, uh, granted there are open questions that you've raised which are valid. <clears throat> At the same time, uh, we've got some property owners here who are attempting to do something which on its face sounds good. Um, and I think, you know, it's some, we, 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 we've been talking about, um, you know, if, as we're going right now, Richard, we're piecemealing each one of these events as time goes on. We've accepted some, we've turned down others because of various reasons, but at some point we need, there needs to be a template or standard in which we can, I think, all judge these things going forward. Having said that, I'll make a motion to approve the application as submitted, and um, and I'll just clarify, of course, please, um, if you, you will, for any motion, um, to recommend okay. one way or the other. I'll recommend that we accept the application as submitted. I'll second. I have a move and second to recommend the application to be approved as is. Any discussion? All yeah, those? I would, well, yeah, I, I had one other question I wanted to ask. Um, what, what would be the, the applicant's opinion of having the condition that it uh, only pr applies to you as owner-operator and it would expire upon seller property? Um, and I, and I, but but yeah. part of me doesn't want to put you on the spot and ask that immediately. So, and by the same token, I, I haven't heard enough to make me want to not grant it, but I certainly have concerns. And my concerns over access and public safety, I think, do apply to zoning because zoning impacts public services, resource allocation of the county services, and that applies to infrastructure and everything else. If we have a plethora of these on every yard road in the county, then maintenance costs on services go up, everything goes up, the burden goes up. So I think it doesn't apply. And I didn't know if maybe tabling this might be an option, but the motion's already made. So. Okay. Any other questions? I've got a problem with the traffic over there. Cold roads are busy roads now, and you start adding quite a few more cars to it. I, uh, I just don't think it, it would be a very safe place because like everywhere else in this county, everybody seems to be in a hurry. And, uh, so I would have to vote against it on that. Any other discussion? Would limiting the number of people from 100 to 50 or something like that make a difference in traffic or if they want to do that, I don't know. Uh, you know, you get 100 people, you're going to have 50 seat cars going in there at one time and you're trying to get out at one time. Mm -hmm. Some of them had a few drinks, so I don't know what's going to happen. How many lines do you have? Do you have actually have three lines? Not yet. Oh, Not yet. You plan on planting. But that's, that's, that's part the, of the line. As far as our, our goal within the next one term plan. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
and, and you know, the vision that we have to share our property with guests. My vision is, you know, talking with Richard when we started putting all of this together and, and the plan is, you know, if, if you wanted to have a baby shower in my living room, I have to have a permit for that. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to throw a bridal shower for your daughter, I have to have a permit for you to use my space for that. So my mind, in my mind, this is our home. We're certainly not going to have rap concerts in our home, in our yard. We we want to be able to have small fundraising events, very small intimate weddings. I truly don't see us ever having 100 people on the property. Or near that, really. Or near that. And so for you to ask the question, would we be okay, you know, making it conditional that it's just us and that if we sell the property, the next person has to apply. I'm surprised that's not part of this this permit. You know, that the you next know owners, you know what I mean? I, I'm actually surprised that, that it would go with the land, that the next people wouldn't have to apply for that same mm -hmm. permit. So the heart for us, um, and Bob, can I just back up and say one more thing? I'm new to Georgia, as a matter of fact. I just moved from Florida last summer, and in pursuing this dream with Brent, um, it warms my heart that you open your planning commission with a, a prayer, an invocation. I come from a much larger community, and so that's the fabric of, of where I want to be and what I want to give back to this community. If the church group wanted to hold a retreat at our property, we need a permit to do that. Um, so that's what we're here seeking. Um, we're here seeking a special use permit for small, intimate affairs, and certainly things that would add back to the community and never in any way take away. And I certainly understand your concern about public safety and the entrance and egress, and we are working really hard with the angels on her back to number one, make sure that everyone that enters our property is safe. That's equally important to us. So all of those things will be addressed. Thank you for this opportunity. Any other question or discussion? All those in favor of uh, the rezone recommendation being passed as is, please raise your hand. Motion carries. This public hearing is closed. We have one other rezone request for uh, special use request. I'd like to announce we'll have a Open public hearing for this. Richard, what's the county recommendation, please? Thank you, Mr. King. Sarah Postaway submitted an application for a conditional use request on about 27 acres on Philadelphia Road, and this is adjacent to the Philadelphia Baptist Church. The intent for the request would be to host small special events such as bridals or baby showers, small dinner parties catered dinner or lunch parties themed around holidays, small outdoor weddings, small fundraising events. This is, um, of course, just west of 515 on that section of Philadelphia Road and includes a barn built in about 1999 as well as a house built in about 1999. So this is a deep property uh, you can see the, the driveway with right now for sale sign uh, right adjacent to the church. And then once you go on to the paved driveway, you drive back and from the property line behind the church, it's about a thousand feet to the barn and then another four or five hundred feet to the house. The applicant proposes to use the barn for events. The house will primarily be used for residential purposes and a family member will live in the house according to the applicant. The applicant has stated that all events would end at or before 10 o'clock. In reviewing the criteria for conditional use, a couple of things that stood out. Again, hours and manner of operation. Nearby uses include single-family residences, the Philadelphia Church, and agriculture uses, limiting the hours so, so that all operations end at or before 10 o'clock may be appropriate. 
The proposed use is consistent with the goals and objectives of the comprehensive plan. This area, the comprehensive plan lists this area as suburban infill due to its proximity to 515. In terms of recommendations for the application, staff recommends that a condition be placed on the property that all operations end at or before 10 o'clock. Uh, is Mr. or Ms. or Ms. Postal White here? I am. Please, um, is there anybody you'd like to add? I'm um, Sarah Postal and I am looking at the property at 1290 Philadelphia. And I've looked and looked and looked for the last three years for a specific place to have a barn. I do look for specific on roads um, because I don't want any of the people that are coming to events to go down some windy road and hilly and everything like this. This was very pretty local and in town basically even though we're in the county and it has access on both ends of, of Philadelphia Road for people to come in and on. Um, I started out basically, um, this is my first um, step in the process. I have not bought the property because I just need to make sure that I can go forward with the venue before I actually purchase the property. Um, we will be um, adding to that property because there's just a pole barn right now and so I'm looking at building another um, barn and um, restroom facilities for um, men and women and handicapped. And the other barn that we're looking at possibly building um, is just going to be just adjacent to the um, barn that's the pole barn that's already there and it will be enclosed and that's where any music will be. Um, and I do hope that um, in my layout, I put in that all music has to stop by 9.45 and all people have to be off the premises by 10.15, 10 10.30, 10 as far as to be um, set. Any questions for me? Any questions for How far exactly is your barn or the, where you're going to be holding the events to the driveway or parking lot to fill it up here? Back to church. Well, Richard and I went out there and, and um, measured it, and I think it was over a thousand feet away from the, the church property. From where the, the barn is? Mm -hmm. Right, so what, what I did is two different measurements uh, because it's a paved driveway and, and it, it's not straight, um, but it, it's fairly straight. Uh, I drove it from the structure to the approximate property line closest to this property in question, um, the closest church property line. And driving it, it was a little over a thousand feet, and also walked it with a measuring wheel, and it was a little over a thousand feet to the nearest property line um, of the church, kind of the, the property line behind the church. You said you were going to build a new barn. Does that mean you're going to tear this one down? No. There be um, that would be the open barn for actual the wedding ceremonies, and then another barn that has air conditioning in it to actually um, really um, do reception. And, and, and it would be even farther back from the church. Yes. Are you going to limit the number of? <laughs> people that can attend more of these? Yes, yeah, so I'm looking at 3,000 square foot barn, so no more. 150, but max would be 200. Yeah. I noticed that the beginning is a small outdoor where there's no more than 100, and then in the amenities it says 200, so there is 200. Yeah, um, and that would be total max. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's a hard... Um, I have it priced at, you can have up to 100 and then I also have another price in there for 150 and then 200 to total max. I hope not to have to have too many 200s, because that's a lot of people, but um, I went around to some of the other areas and, and um, saw where they were doing 150 people and, so I was, and saw about their square foot of form, so that's why I have it. I was just sitting on the number two that the location of open space of uh, the provision of screening may be referred to. What screening have you planned? What way? Screening for plants or something from the 
I guess the church in the nearby pocket or something. Oh, um, if, if the church is visible, then we can also um, plant some trees just to kind of screen that off with um, fast growing trees. Have you ever done this before? I've done, I've, back 25 years ago, I had a party business in um, Parsville, South Carolina for kids. Um, they, uh, I have not done wedding venues, but I do actually um, host a lot of different um, type of uh, parties. And I actually do some catering, but I will not be doing any catering for this. That's, that's not what I want. So who would be doing the catering? You'd hire? You hire. The bride and groom hire the, their own caterer. So you just provide the facility and they yes, bring sir. pie. Yes, sir. And you haven't acquired the property, though. So you no. I don't want to buy the property unless I can do this. So do you, do you have a, a firm offer to purchase provided you get? I have an intent. Um, contract. What would be your thoughts on adding the application that it spurred you as that property owner? I like that to a point, but then I'm like, well, maybe the other person looking at buying the bit, buying it is interested in the same business, and so I don't know. I mean, mine is going to go to my. I want mine to be passed down to my girls because they're going to be a part of this business. So would that apply to them? Yeah, just, of course, just a clarification. You know, we get this from time to time with businesses where sometimes it's a um, in-the-loop type group of folks. Um, you know, they're, they're business folks that are under, say, an LLC, and, um, you know, two or three people are involved, but one of the partners no longer wants to be as directly involved in a gas station or in a restaurant or in whatever it is, and so um, from time to time, you know, on the business license or alcohol license, they need to change the name. The business continues, um, and it a lot of times even, you know, keeps the exact same business name. Um, but, the, you know, the people have changed. And then, of course, a lot of times, you know, business was totally closed, and then somebody brand new. Um, so that's something that, you know, again, it, it goes back to, kind of the issue of conditions on any rezoning case or conditional use application. Um, you know, conditions are fine as long as they are legally enforceable and, you know, can be consistently enforced and easily understood. Any other questions? Okay, we have two people that would like to speak. Are there any others that would like to speak that hasn't signed up? If so, we'd like to ask you to sign up, please. Can, you, can, can we get her a hold of Okay. We want to hear from you. Sir. <laughs> what, what comes after the first owner is part of our concern. Most of the concern that the, the church had in our last conference meeting, and uh, we decided we needed to come as a committee, you know, to discuss this with the, with the commission and everything, was, of course, destruction, distraction, and just dis noise disruption and things like that that can potentially be generated from activities like this. 
There is something that came to mind I, I need to point out, and I think you really need to know this. If you're looking at the fence at the back of the church as the property line, it's not. It's actually over on the church property at the corner by about 25 or 30 feet, I believe it is. We had a survey years ago when they were having problems with property owners. Pasture, always in the pasture there, so graze your cows. We don't care. I didn't understand that, Sam. Where, where is the property line relative to the fence? The, the real property line by survey is over in the pasture. Okay. That's the property line. The pen's in the field out there. So how far would that be from where the fence might be, just roughly? Well, it, it runs at an angle, but the maximum down at that corner is going to be somewhere around 25 to 30 feet. I've not checked it in a long time. Okay. We had it surveyed probably 10, 20 years ago or something. But that that's something that we would definitely want straightened out with change of ownership. Of course, the barn is visible from the church, and in the event that you know this passes, I would certainly uh, hope that we could have some type of a visual barrier because there's going to be noise, there's going to be lights, there's going to be activity go on. The other thing was parking. Um, I've been down in there before, and I, I know what the land looks like, and I just do not see enough parking. It, in our parking lot at church, we might have 200 people come to service, and that generates about 100 cars. And that's all, and that's a full lot. And some park on the other side of the road, and some park along the road. So that's another concern we have is, will people, oh, they're not using the church parking lot, can we park there? You know, we don't want to be liable for accidents and things. And another thing is the entrance uh, coming out of that property has been historically used as agricultural slash residential purposes. It's narrow. It comes in at a, a vertical downgrade. There's not great sight distance back to the west. Now, I don't know what county ordinance sight distance requirements are, but everybody in this room knows I work for GDOT. And, and on the state highway system, it's 600 feet right now. And it keeps growing. So, I don't know, I don't think you've got 600 feet to the west, but you may not be required for that. And it's an, it's an already a driveway. That's, I'm talking about if you had to add a driveway, we would, that's what we would require. But we also make changes when use of the driveway changes. And this is going to start talking about commercial use. Uh, we meet one Sunday a month, Saturday night, four one, and Sunday, each month. But in one month, we meet the whole week, day and night services. Then there's the occasional funeral that's always never scheduled. You never tell them what time, what day of the week, what time of the day that the funerals are. You start having 50, 60, 100 cars coming out of that little old driveway, and then you've got a funeral going on, and that procession trying to come in and out, and people trying to go in and out and leave the church. That, those are concerns that we think of. And that's the reason we wanted to come and express that to the board. Because, you know, it's not everybody that goes to church there and understands the, the parking situation and what goes on. And quite frankly, you know, Mr. Hendry made a very good point. If you think they drive fast on Cove Road, try Philadelphia Road. I and mean, they fly through there. And I mean, there's been a lot of times I've nearly been hit myself. I mean, you have to stop and look and really pay attention before you pull out of that wide church parking lot or you get run over. They fly on Lumber Company Road, too. Oh, that they do. <laughs> um, and I feel like the primary direction the traffic, traffic will egress from there will be back in front of the church to the signalized intersection out at Philadelphia and 515, rather than down to the unsignalized intersection, which doesn't have the greatest side distance either on State Route 53. So those are just some concerns. You know, uh, my wife has worked in the line of business of weddings and things for several years with flowers, so we kind of know what goes on with these events, whether they're small or private or whatever. Sometimes they can, be, can become a teardown. Uh, some do, some don't. You know, we just prefer not to have that going on around our church that has been held there for over 160 years. We're just trying to keep going with what's been handed down generation after generation, trying to keep a peaceful atmosphere, um, not trying to knock anybody out of business or anything like that, but we just don't feel like the two mesh very well at this particular location. So I think I've used my three minutes. Question, Sam. What was that property used for up to this point? 
to my knowledge, it's always been agricultural. Either pasture or it might have been forested. You're old. But all my life, for 49 years, it's been pasture. Thank you. Mr. Greg Long. I'm good. Are you sure? Yes, sir. Well, was there any other questions for Sam? So, Sam, again, what, what's your what's your position? What's your bottom line position on this applicant here? Uh, representing the church, yeah. we are not in favor of having that type of a venue behind the church, that type of property use, because we we don't feel like you can adequately support the people that could be. And, and especially knowing now that there's going to be another 3,000 square foot structure to you know potentially be put in as future use, where are they going to park all these people down there? Sam, how far is would the entrance be to this venue to the church parking lot? Mm -hmm. They're sandwiched right beside each other. I mean, this is just a matter of maybe 60 feet. For me, you. For me, you. <laughs> For me, you. Yeah. There's just a little strip of grass between. <clears throat> Any other questions, or is there a second exit out of there with this many people? If there should be an emergency, is there another exit to come out other than this one at the church? Not that I'm aware of. I did see um, that I would want to try to um, widen that area, and so we have kind of one lane coming in and then one lane coming out, but not totally the road, the driveway, just in the entrance and up at Philadelphia Road because it is narrow, like you said. And I would think it would be better for our business if we had a little bit more um, openness for, for coming in and out. Well, at least on the pictures, the road or driveway, <clears throat> at least once you turn into the right, uh, driveway, it's only wide enough for one car. Is that accurate? Yes. So. Uh, when you, when you explain what you want to do, the vision that you offered to me was not as clear as the vision I heard from the first applicant. So help me again with what, what is your vision for what you're trying to do here? Trying to do outdoor weddings um, and then also include other events um, from showers or church functions, anything like that. I'm wanting to make sure my neighbors are also happy um, with this because I do know it, it, it is a concern for a lot of people and um, no matter where you go as a business. But um, so my main bit, um, thought process was basically doing wedding venues out, outdoor there at the barn. Um, that seems to be a very popular um, setting now for weddings um, and it just keeps on growing over the last 15 years. The reason why I'm doing an indoor barn is because of the air condition and it also helps keep the noise level down. Um, and so it's not that it's adding any more people than what the, if I just left the pole barn. It's just adding more comfort and more beauty to the area. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Peggy Smith, you've got three minutes. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm Peggy Smith. I am, with my daughter and I, we are the owners of the property. Um, we've owned the property for about seven or eight years. Um, we, um, I just wanted to say, just tell a little bit of the background of this property. When we bought the property, we've been great neighbors with the church. I feel like, you know, like we've, you know, um, it coexisted um, in, in a, a reasonable manner. Um, when we bought the property, it was completely overgrown. It, we bought it um, during the downturn in real estate. It was you couldn't even see the house. Um, we bought it, um, paid about three hundred sixty-four thousand dollars for the whole property, and it needed a lot of work. Um, so we put in weekends and actually years of work to bring that property value up and uh, clear the clear the land, um, and then. Um, 
my sister moved away, my brother lives up in Blue Ridge, I live down in Suwannee, and our kids grew up, and we no longer really can care for the property like that property needs. I mean, it's 27 acres. It takes a lot of maintenance. And um, so we put a renter in there, and we rented out the past, the big 10-acre pasture. They have a five-acre pasture and a 10-acre pasture, um, in addition to other, other areas. Um, but um, I just wanted the, the idea that um, we put the property on the market. We asked $650,000 for it. And, um, you know, like we really hoped that we would be able to, you know, improve the, the land value. Um, you know, like we're, we're, you know, we just can't care for the property like we used to be able to. Um, so I'm just hoping that, you know, like that I'm sure um, Ms. Possilway you know, would probably have plans to widen that driveway and you could put parking all along the left side of the driveway. And it is a, you know, like a long drive down to the barn. So I'm just putting it out there that I think the property value, um, we've really worked hard to raise the value of that property and, um, you know, we don't have a, you know, we don't really care what she does to the property, but it is, um, it is a beautiful piece of property and um, a lot of work is going into it. So we just hope that, um, um, that they can work that out and, you know, and, and be good neighbors. Okay. <coughs> Other comments or questions? very much for looking to bring your business to business. We, we certainly appreciate that. Um, and and it's, it's difficult to, to think that um, you can't foresee the future. You don't know what's going to happen. You know, the change is inevitable. You just hope you can direct it uh, toward the goal and vision that, that's there for the family and the residents. Um, it makes it difficult on us sitting here when you have a coin has been flipped and it came down directly on its edge in public comment. Um, and and uh, it's good that the property owner's here, because uh, that was one of my concerns. Is, you know, being the property owner, you know, you're limited on what you can put forth in resources to try to get site planning done and, and civil work done to estimate what you could possibly do in your, in your budget to, to make some of these changes happen before you actually know you're going to get this property. Um, it, it leads back to what Richard said earlier. You know, you can't predict just because we make a decision here what's going to happen down the road. Things may or may not happen. There's plenty of things that may prohibit this help from going through, and their concerns are never going to be real. And if if we don't try to, at the same time, listen to some of those comments and try to plan ahead and think of what steps could we take to, to put everybody at ease, um, I, I just I, I don't know that we would. Uh, be doing the right service, but I don't know how far that needs to get. You know, we can't sit here and start putting 50 million conditions on every single proposal. It'll just stifle anything whatsoever. Um, but I, I feel like there should be, I do feel like, based on the discussions tonight, there should be something at some point to say uh, what other criteria can be put other than just 10 o'clock time stopped at night. You know, it just seems like the perpetual at 9 o'clock we roll up the sidewalks. Yeah, and I'm glad for it, but is that the only thing we do? No. There's plenty of other things that, that go into the, the lifestyle of the community and the, and the values of the town. So I'm not sure what else needs to be uh, included in, in this, but I just have a gut feeling there should be something, some other provision to, to bridge this gap here to see that you know progress is made without stifling change. I just don't know what that is. I'm not that smart. I've got a problem with the traffic like the other one. And I know for a fact that the little roads like that, the county can't do nothing with because there's no right of way. They, they can't widen it, they can't pave it, they can't do nothing. 
so it's not going to get in better traffic wise. You mean coming in and out of the property? Yeah. So if I widen the front of the drive, drive, you don't think that would help with the entrance well, and exit? We can't ask you to widen the road, uh, but I know as, as far as the county is concerned, there's no right of way on most of these dirt roads that we've got left. If there was, it'd be a pavement. But Sam can tell you that we can't pave them because they got to have a 60 foot right of way. You can't widen them, so there's not going to be any improvement in that, really. Well, my concern is uh, out of respect for 160 years that church has been there. And I don't know how we can not respect that. Um, not that you would not respect it, but. I thought it would be my church home, but who knows? Yeah. The, I just don't, I, I just think that there are too many unanswered questions here in my mind. So I will make a motion or recommendation to deny the request. Awesome. We have a move and second to recommend to deny the request. Any discussion? All those in favor of recommending to deny the request, please raise your hand. Motion carried. Yes. This public hearing is closed. The next item on the agenda is board uh, comments. Are there any questions or comments from the board? I don't think everybody's coming out. We make better decisions when we have good input. Too many times we're here and there's not enough people. So thank you for coming. As many of these we've had over the years, similar to this, Miss, uh, is it Carol? I believe, or what? Um, that's the only time I've heard that question being asked what would happen mm -hmm. in the future. That was, a, that was a very good question. So, again, the. Uh, I still think that we need some rules and regulations on venues because this is some guidance. It's just it's difficult. This has probably been a dozen to fifteen of these in the last couple of years. And they're all and they're all mm -hmm. difficult because you see both sides of these and you don't have to read anything to go through the recommend or not recommend. And in this case the idea of a a DJ across the road from the funeral or a revival. Well, my deciding venues, factor. So weddings are going to be in the evening hours. I don't think your funerals are. Well, so it's just a. Uh, they have. <laughs> have they? Mm -hmm. They're here to pick his county, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Again, had this been, you know, my my biggest problem or concern, not not problem, concern was that your driveway is mm -hmm. from here to there to Philadelphia. If it were a quarter mile down the road, I'd probably, you know, I wouldn't have any concerns at all. Um, but for, if you had a 200 people there, I could see somebody, somebody possibly using their parking lot to park the car and something happened to get into the car or they have an accident or whatever. That, 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 again, that's my concern was it being so close to the church. Right. And there were parking attendants um, for a big party, so I mean, I would hope that our parking attendants would make sure that they park in our parking lot. Any other board comments? And, well, I would just make a comment. Please, please consider how you would like to handle the longevity of this and the future use. If, if you pick another piece of property at Lee and Pickens County or reapply on this one if things change and, and think about how you would like to have that as part of the application because for me the proximity to 515 there and long-term growth of pick and, and the church right next door you know it survived 160 years if you sell that property and somebody has a different vision of an event than you do 
that chooses that property because of its proximity to 515 when we drove it out that way, they, they could very easily have a whole different aspect of looking at that. And if it transfers with them, then we're stuck. Right. With nothing, you know, it's, it's, it's very difficult to take something away from somebody once you give it to them. That's why I was like, I'm, I can see either way of that going, either way. Because, you know, my girls were wanting to be part of that business. And, and this, you know, from a personal standpoint, you know, I'm, I'm a, it's about as big a personal property rights advocate as, as there is. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I got to leave that sometimes serving here i got to look at uh, i guess the big picture even though if it were up to me i would say it's your property do what you want to do with it as long as it doesn't interfere with somebody else's mm -hmm. but there's a little bit more big bigger picture here involved so um, again you're, you know you, you're welcome in the future to resubmit at a later date that come up with a new plan or, or another piece of property. I encourage you to do so. Any other comments? Any public comments? The last item is adjournment. To so move. <laughs> and move. Are you a second? Second. Move and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of adjournment, please write your name. Harold. Harold. Yeah. <laughs>